Even in the wake of the flagrant shattering of the international norm against chemical weapons use, Russia continues to hold the Council hostage and shirk its international responsibilities, including as a party to the Chemical Weapons Convention. What we have learned, what the Syrian people have learned, is that the Security Council the world needs to deal with this crisis is not the Security Council we have. The Russian side tries to urge our partners, including its partners in Washington, to analyze this situation objectively, not to make decisions until the official verdict of the UN experts who worked in Syria, which in reality can give a legitimate conclusion to whether chemical weapons were used. Look, I think it's wrong to make a decision about whether you enter a war or not, purely on humanitarian motives. Yes, they're always part of the calculation, but the ultimate calculation has to be the national interest of the United States. Otherwise, we would be at war right now in the Congo and in half of West Africa and in places a lot of Americans haven't even heard about. So it has to be the principle of national interest. And whether or not you are never going to get a CSI level, you know, a determination of what exactly happened, you never get that. Uh, and as to choosing your enemies, uh, remind everybody the obvious fact that in the Second World War, the Good War, uh, we were allied, helping, supplying, um, doing everything that we could to help Stalin, who was the second worst man in the world because we had to defeat the first worst. So we have to make a determination, do we have a preference among the combatants in Syria? Where's our national interest? And the speech by uh, power you know, our ambassador at the UN was a nice speech, you know, that you give in a debating society. But unfortunately, the world is a tough place. And we, we have to make a decision not in decrying the heartlessness of the rest of the world. The rest of the world acts in its interest. That's always been true. It remains today and always will be. The way in which we've set up uh, our assistance is to carefully vet the people that we're working with. Uh, there have been some complaints, for instance, in Congress that it's taken a long time for assistance to reach into the country. Uh, but the reason why is that we want to establish not just a pipeline so assistance flows into the country, we want to know who we're working with. We believe that the broad majority of the opposition is not extremists. There are people who want a better future. Al-Qaeda is not just a group of terrorists. They're a bunch of political revolutionaries that want to seize territory for themselves. This is a dire situation where we have the Assad regime, which is despicable on the one hand, and Al-Qaeda and its allies on the other. It's true we need to find opposition we can work with, but that's a very tough game to play. The tragedy here is that two years ago, this started as a popular demonstration in the streets that we saw. There was no Al-Qaeda in the scene, and Obama did nothing. So now it's harder and harder every day. But in the end, the real enemy in the region, the one that threatens to undermine all, all our allies, Lebanon, Jordan, Israel, Egypt, and, and the Gulf states, is the Iran, Syria, Hezbollah, Russia axis. The other guys are disorganized and weak. I think they'd be easier to handle. And that's a decision. It's a tough decision, but it's one that we have to make. Tomahawk missile costs about a million and a half dollars. Uh, so that's kind of a factoid, if you will. A uh, carrier strike group, uh, operating out there will cost you uh, in, in extended operations, so I'm talking about a lot of flying going on as opposed to say routine flying, uh, will cost you about forty million dollars a week. Uh, if it isn't flying that much, say routine, it's about twenty five million dollars a week. With respect to uh, Arab uh, countries uh, offering to bear cost and to assist, the answer is profoundly yes, they have. Uh, that offer is on the table. Admiral, Admiral Greenert uh, said, Charles, that you might have to have an emergency supplemental here. Look, if you have a president who wants to do a strike, and he says it's extremely important, it's very urgent, everything hinges on this, you know, international decency and law hinge on this, then he has to be the one who steps up and provides the funding. Either he suspends some provisions of the sequester, so he allows a transfer of funds from something to allow the use of the funds for this strike, or he does a supplemental. It's not hard to do. You introduce it, you get the House and the Senate to approve. So I think it's his responsibility. He shouldn't, as he does everything else, shirk it onto the Congress. He should propose it. It's, he's the one who said he drew the red line. He's the one who has the, the plan, so to speak, and he should provide the funding. I think it's embarrassing for America to go around with a tin cup to Arab states and say, can you be, can we act as your mercenaries 
It started in the Gulf War where we, we went around and asked for support of the Saudis and Kuwaitis, and it should stop. If we're, we're going to do a war, we should pay for it. This has been a Sunfish production.